am today And there's a feeling of excitement in the air And the final preparations are now under I finally got the blade back from the grumpy machinist So I'm going to pull the old one off and put the new one on We'll see if it fit on the shaft. Off with the 40 inch right there. It's still pretty stout blade. Okay, so while I was cleaning this blade, I noticed a couple of the shanks have splits in them right there. I think it'll be all right. Uh, there's two of them like that. The other thing I noticed is some of these seem to have a, or at least one, it looked like it had an F9. F9. The rest of them have F8. You saw where Jack hammered this insert in. So this, this will uh, create tension in the blade. So it's all unknown right now what's going to happen with this blade. Um, in fact, when I start it up, start it spinning, I'll probably stand off to the side just in case bullets fly at me. Well, let's put it in over here. Let's get her done. Decided to do uh, a side-by-side -side comparison. That's an 18-inch white oak right there. There's the 40-inch blade. And there's the 48-inch blade. It looks so much bigger Let's spread a little oil on the back side of this especially around where that color is going to be here goes the, the moment of truth for the grumpy machinist is he worth his weight and salt or gold. So far, so good. It kind of went on. Oh man, that thing's heavy. Oh yeah, it worked. Thank you, grumpy machinists. That's dead on. I didn't see any cracks around this right here, but the thing that was concerning is that somebody really knocked the fire out of it with the hammer, but it doesn't look like it's a saw doctor that did it. It looked like, you know, I don't know, somebody just randomly hit it. So that's good news, that worked. Very cool. With this extra distance that I'm going to have right here, that it, that'll slow down some of my saw, uh, chainsaw work. It's pretty stout. It looks like it looks like it's concave toward the the board side. So the blade guide is two dowel rods. Screw it in here. This one right here is adjusted by this this motion here, this adjustment. So I get just a hair of light on this side, this side over here. 
and then I run this in so I just have just a hair of light on that side so uh, that's with the blade idle I mean it's once you start running a log through there it'll it'll bow up and change on you Okay, just, just a little bit of daylight there on that one. Lock these down. I'm gonna screw this in. So I always try to oil this before we start sawing every time. Alright. Let me get a straight edge up here to check this blade. I'm rushing just a little bit today because of the uh, it's about to rain on me. So what we got here is about a I got this ruler sitting on top of the collar and I'm making sure I don't hit the bit in the got about an eighth of an inch here touching here so I have no idea what mr. Munro run, run this the rpms he run this at um, you know if I have enough rpms it should straighten up I'm gonna have to hammer it anyway because of that insert and the hammer marks and all that stuff so we'll we'll uh, we'll call it good right there blade guide set the board divider seems to be spaced about right almost three fingers of space right there and, it, and it's lined up so I hope y'all enjoyed the video and hope you found it was interesting and what I'm gonna do right now get off camera I'm gonna oil this blade up so it can't rust the, that WD-40 I was sprayed on there that, that doesn't ever last anyway thanks for watching We worked all night long. <laughs> that day and all night until the next day getting them things cut. <laughs> he likes to lie himself in the trouble. <laughs> you didn't really think I'd leave you hanging, did you? We're gonna have to test this. So I've got a little cedar up there. Uh, we'll We'll run that cedar through here. It's probably a six inch cedar. It's, it's, I don't want to run that white oak because it's, uh, that white oak's tough. I don't need to add a lot of stress right now. I just want to see what this looks like running on the mill. But, um, pretty exciting. I try to keep this blade oiled all the time because it, I don't want it to rust, especially these gullets and everything. The other blade I ran, that 40 inch, had Simmons, I believe it was Simmons, inserts um, and bits. But I don't know what F8 means. If uh, somebody's watching this, knows what an F8 is, let me know. Because I probably should order some teeth for this just so I have some on hand. Because when I hit nails, I'll end up using some some bits, some old bits, just to keep from having to spend so much time on the trying to straighten out the bits. You know, Mr. Munro, he he uh, he sawmilled anything that was commercial. So uh, he told me he he sawmilled. He was sawmilling uh, railroad ties, the ties that goes under the rails. He sawmilled pot pallet wood. He cut boards. But back in his day, there wasn't a lot of people, you know, that did wide it, wide slabs or anything like that. So he was he was more commercial than anything. That's what it sounded like to me. There you go. Ready for the test.
And this is my grandfather's tractor. Here's the first test. So today we've got Jackie in here in the River Park barbecue and we're going to give him a little Christmas present that's basically the internet has been screaming that Jack get this. Oh no. There you go Jack. Oh Jack the... really jump out and bite me. <laughs> it's not a gag. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I got my own thing on there. And it's got a pocket on it. <laughs> Don't bother me. Okay, hold it down, put the face right there. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, I'm not so grumpy today. He's buying lunch and gave me a shirt with a pocket. And it's a t shirt, too. like the blades rubbing on it which if it's concave out that's that's gonna happen so we'll see if we can cut one board this is it's a little bit uh, frightening to do this right now because I'm just not familiar with the blade nothing felt nothing flew off of it though Okay, so what I'm going to do now is cut a one inch board and 
if the blade's walking in the log, it won't be the same on both ends. Here's an excellent video on diagnosing blade problems. Okay, a lot of good things happened today and that the blade fit on the arbor and nothing flew off the blade. At least I didn't hear anything falling off of it. Looks like it's still got all the teeth, all the bits. So that's a good thing. It seems to be out of balance like it's warped, but it, it did do pretty good for an unknown blade. So what we got here is an inch and an eighth. And down on this end we got inch and a quarter, so it's an eighth inch off over uh, 10, a little over 10 feet. So as you can see, the blade didn't kill me. The blade's got to be two decades old. I mean, it's, it's, it's completely unknown the condition of the blade. Mr. Monroe didn't even remember exactly what, he just said it was a good blade. So what I need to do now is I'm gonna measure the RPM that the tractor is producing, and I'm gonna measure the curve that this wobble blade is cutting right now. And I'm doing this just to make notes for the saw doctor. And by the way, if anybody knows a saw doctor uh, within you know, East Texas, Louisiana, or Arkansas, maybe even Oklahoma, I can run this blade up there to him and see what he can do with it. So uh, I'm going to put another log on this sawmill right now and we'll measure that curve. Then I'll pull this safety equipment away and we'll measure the uh, RPM and lead. And by the way, on the lead, I, I made a little tool to do that and I'll show you how that works right here. First thing I do is just mark a tooth. I'm going to check the lead here. The next thing I got to do is dis, uh, disable the blade guide so it doesn't touch the blade. So this is a, I don't even know what this went to. It's some kind of caliper. Hopefully y'all can see this. But all it is is a blade, a razor blade that I put a 90 degree in and epoxied it to this. So this right here, this blade, razor blade, will fit down in between the two inch, and, um, one inch by quarter angle iron. So I'll show you that now. So what I do is, hopefully y'all can see this, I put the razor blade down in between the tracks, catch, catch a tooth right here that's marked, loosen this up, keep this uh, parallel across, or level across here, and touch, just barely touch that bit right there. So it's sitting down in between the two angle iron. It can't go this way. And it's just touching that tooth right there. So now I'm gonna do it on the other side. So now what I'm gonna do is, y'all can't see this off camera, but I'm rotating the, that piece of survey tape right over here where it's even with this quarter inch uh, angle iron. I'm going to set my tool back down in between those two. Uh, I need a ruler. Let's 
So I set it down in the angle iron. And I get my ruler out. Which I'm doing this for camera. I'd use a different ruler, but I want y'all to be able to see this. So this, this tool cannot move in the track this way. And I'm about... It's, it's a little less... It's a little less than... Let's see if I can get it. It's a little greater than 1 16th. So that means I've got 1 16th going into the log. In other words, it's canting into the log like this. So 1 16th into the log. And remember I had 1 8th inch bigger on the uh, butt end than I did on the arriving end. But the, the manual says, you know, that's about right, 330 seconds or so. But I'm not sure that, you know, it didn't come with the 48 inch blade. I don't know what, I really don't know what the lead should be. And um, if somebody uh, is familiar with this, they can let me know in the comments. But I'm going to leave it right where it is for now. But to tell you the truth, I'm going to pull this. At some point, I'm going to pull this blade back off when I find a saw doctor and put my 40 back on there because I can cut boards. I can reliably cut boards on it. And uh, I'm going to need to do that here in the next few weeks. So that's, uh, that's that. Now let's get an RPM on this. Okay, so first I'm going to check idle just because I never looked at it before. thing left to do is get this blade to a saw doctor now and see if he pronounces it DOA or if he can repair it. Thank you for watching this video. Hope it was entertaining. The, the only thing that I would do right now that I know to do would be to put a dial caliper on here and see how much the run out actually is instead of checking the curve. But this is what I got. It's what I've done. So uh, hope y'all enjoyed Jack and my condolences to the Munros for losing Kenneth. He was a great sawyer and a great man. God bless y'all. Have a great week. Last day, I uh, he was letting me uh, semi-retire. I'd work a couple of days a week or whatever. But he called me one day and he said, the black I got I got a piece of load of pallets over here and I got enough logs to finish them out. Would you come and cut them up? I said, after that, I'm going to shut it down. I thought, I've heard that, I've heard that. I'm going to shut it down. I said, okay, I'll come, I'll come cut them up. And I went over there. And you know half them logs was walnut and cherry and I made pilot lumber out of them. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Huh. That's what he wanted. He wanted and he he finished that load of pilots out and shut it down. He was just about broke. he him Warehouser he'd gotten debt to them or something. He, he just become very near going broke.